Hello friends. In the previous session, we have seen the definition of the practical voltage source and the practical current source and I have put up uh, these graphs in front of you so that we can just review it a little bit. Now, this graph is obtained when you connect the load across the practical voltage source and the practical current source. This is the load resistance. Alright, and you vary it like this. Now, in the previous session, I actually forgot to <coughs> draw the graph of the practical current source. Alright, so let us see the graph, how we get the graph of the practical current source. Now, what does this mean? This point means that VL is equal to 0. When will VL be equal to 0? VL will be this voltage, right? VL will be equal to 0 when this particular resistance is so low that the current into resistance become equal to 0. Alright, well, what does that mean? When you replace this by a short circuit here, when you replace this by a short circuit, clearly you know that nothing will go through the RP. The current, entire current will go through the short circuit because current always moves through the lowest resistance path. So if you have a short circuit, the entire current will move through the short circuit. Alright, therefore the load current, in this case this is IL, here also I will mark this is IL and this is the terminal voltage. Here also we are having the terminal voltage VT. <coughs> Now, so the IL will be equal to the source current IS. What is this point here? This point, the current IL equal to zero. What is the meaning of that? The resistance is so huge that there is no current which is going to flow through this particular RL. That means you are having an open circuit. In that case, what will be equal to VL or VT, the load resistance, or I will just call, I will just use one nomenclature. I will call it as VL. All right. So VL will be equal to the current will be flowing only through this here. So clearly according to Ohm's law, this particular voltage will be equal to Is into Rp. So that is what we have done here and this is also a linear graph. Now just to give a comparison between ideal, the ideal voltage source graph. So in an ideal voltage source, the graph will be like this, right? For any value of current, the voltage always is the constant. So this is the ideal and this is the practical. The red one is the ideal and the yellow, uh, violet one is the Sorry, the red one is the practical and the violet one is the ideal. Sorry, I'll just get a mistake here. Yeah. In this case, whatever be the voltage, the current will be exactly the same. All right. Yeah. So this is the ideal case and this is the practical case. All right. Now, if you look at these two graphs, what you can see is that there is a lot of similarity between these two. All right, the two graphs are looking very similar. In fact, the amazing thing here is that if you have a voltage source, if you have something like this, practical voltage source, and this is the load resistance, all right, and a current source, and another load resistance, this is RL. So this particular area is the practical voltage source and this particular area is the practical current source. All right, I'll just draw it once again. So Vs, Rs and this is equal to Is and Rp. All right. So this is Il. Let this be Vl. This is the load voltage or the terminal voltage and this is the Il. Now, if the current and voltage characteristics are exactly the similar, exactly similar, the load resistance will not even know whether it is connected to an ID, the practical voltage source or a practical voltage, practical current source. That means if the IL versus VL are same, the load resistance cannot differentiate whether it is connected to a voltage source or a current source that means practically all right so how can you do this if you have a voltage source how can you replace it by a current source that means these two will be electrically equivalent all right this has to be electrically equivalent in some condition i'm not telling every voltage source is equivalent to every current source there's a particular condition which you do in that way you can develop a procedure in which you can convert a given voltage source into a given current source. Alright, for that let us find the value of VL from this case here. So VL as per a simple voltage division is Vs into RL divided by RS plus RL. 
all right similarly in this case vl will be equal to il into rl so what is il equal to this current you can obtain by a simple current division so this is the current which is entering so it is is into the current in the other branch into rp divided by the total current total resistance rp plus rl all right so this is il so you have a multiplied by an rl also all right now in which case both the vl terms will be equal all right let us see the first thing which has to be equal is that so let me just rearrange this little bit so is into rp i'll just write it here so vl is equal to is into rp multiplied by rp divided by rp plus r now it will you will get more clarity now let us take this separately let us put graphs these things here yeah now clearly yeah now it's okay clearly this term and this term are same and in the denominator one is having rs plus rl and another one is having rp plus rl so vl let me just put this voltage source and this is of the current source vl of voltage source will be equal to vl of the current source when rs will be equal to rp and let us see what else we have to change the value of vs should be equal to is into rp and vs should be equal to is into rp in that case this particular voltage and this particular voltage will be having the exact same value or they have the same voltage characteristics so now because rs is equal to rp is already a condition you can replace it by is into rs also all right so what does this mean actually let me just put it into another diagram here what it means is that for example you are having a current source all right this is the practical current source which you are having all right and this is the load resistance this is the load resistance so this area is the practical current source so you can replace this thing by a voltage source and this resistance won't even understand a thing how should you, how you should replace you first draw it like this and this will be rl but simply drawing will not give you any results right you have to find what is the value of vs and what is the value of rs clearly rs will be equal to rp all right so that is not a problem and what is vs vs is nothing but is into rp vs will be equal to is into rp similarly this is the source transformation which i have done now this is why it is called source transformation i have converted a current source into a voltage source similarly if you have a voltage source vs all right and this is the load resistance rl so this is your voltage source how can i convert it into a current source you just put like this but simply putting this is not enough you need a proper values for this so what will be this is and what will be this rp rp will be equal to rs so that's not an issue all right but what will be the value of is is will be nothing but equal to vs divided by rp from this equation is is nothing but vs divided by rp all right so to understand this what we have to do we have to do a simple numerical now friends this is the first problem i have taken let me guarantee you in no competitive exam they are going to ask this question because it's a very very trivial question but i just wanted to give you a feel of this conversion the question is to convert this particular current source practical current source into a practical voltage source so what i have what we have to do we have to first draw the polarity properly see you clearly note that when the current is in the upward direction see i have put the positive terminal in the top and negative terminal in the bottom that is important all right so i have replaced it by rs and this will be vs now what will be rs rs is nothing but rp which is this particular value so it is 2 ohms and what is vs vs is nothing but is into rs so this is is and this is R, is into rs so that is equal to 3 into 2 which is equal to 6 volts and this you can do reverse also now let us get into a little bit of into a serious mode and let us take the next problem yes now we have got the next problem now in this problem they have asked you to find the value of i now you will ask me 
why don't this is so trivial question you can just use node analysis or mesh analysis you can directly get it this in fact in this question if you use node analysis you are going to get the answer directly but just because we have learned source transformation theorem and personally i like to do mesh analysis i feel that i make mistakes in node analysis so what i can do is that i can convert this particular circuit into a mesh analysis circuit now at this present time i cannot uh, use mesh analysis because of this particular current source i will have to use other techniques so how can i convert now clearly you can see that this particular section is nothing but a current source in parallel with a particular resistance or it is is in parallel with rp therefore this is eligible for a source transformation all right this is eligible for a source transformation so whenever you are having a current source which is directly in parallel with the resistance without any other resistance in between direct parallel connection you can directly use the source transformation same way when you have a voltage source in series with a uh, resistance you can directly use the uh, source transformation for voltage uh, source to current source so in this case we are going to do a current source to voltage source all right so what i have to do i have to replace this now so after the current source conversion what is happening i have to use the symbols like this now and i am going to replace it like this and the remainder of the circuit is going to be exactly the same now you clearly know this series resistance will be 5k because rp equal to rs and what will be this particular voltage it will be 9 into 5k that means it will be 45 volt so the rest of the circuit is exactly the same 3 volts you don't go and change the current direction what is i 4.7 and this is 3 so clearly current will be equal to the potential difference 45 minus 3 in this particular direction divided by 5 plus 4.7 plus 3 so it will be 42 divided by uh, the result is i will give the result directly 42 divided by 12.7 and this will be in milli amperes all right now i hope you have understood this particular concept in which i have presented uh, the voltage source and current source transformations and i'll see you in the next lecture thank you